In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about three reasons why your mindset is keeping you poor. The first reason is if you stop at I don't know. Have you ever been asked a question about a topic that you know nothing about? But rather than engaging in a conversation with the person who's asked you the question, you simply responded with I don't know. Now, the reason why that's not the best approach is because studies have shown that saying I don't know repeatedly can lead to reduced cognitive effort. And over time, this can be bad because it can lead to a reduced effort to learn. And the reason why learning is super important is because we live in a dynamic world where there are new inventions, new theories, new opportunities arising on a daily basis. And if you choose not to learn about these opportunities, then it means that you can't engage in these opportunities when they arise. And if you're not engaged in the opportunities, then you're not developing the skill sets that these opportunities would give you that you could take advantage of. Hello everyone, my name's Dr. Yosa. And this channel is on all things health, business and finance. My goal is for us to get healthier together whilst making better money and business decisions. The second mindset that you need to change is thinking that all debt is bad. Spoiler alert, all debt is not bad. It actually depends on your financial situation. And I like to split debt into two categories. The first category is good debt, which I define as debt which allows me to actually get to my financial goal, whereas bad debt is something that makes it harder for me to achieve my financial goal or increases the level of resistance in order for me to get to my end goal. In order to make this more understandable, I'm going to link it to some practical examples. So going back to good debt, the idea of good debt in property is linked to a concept known as leverage. And leverage is basically when you borrow money with the idea of investing that money to give you more money in the future. Whereas bad debt is something like purchasing an item that you can't really afford at that present moment in time on a credit card. And rather than paying the amount in full, you pay the minimum amount required by the credit card provider. And as a result, you accumulate interest to the point where the amount of interest that you're paying is equivalent, or if not, more than the actual value of the item. Now, the issue with this is if you have any late payments or if you have a bad credit score to begin with, these two things will make your credit score even worse. And a credit score that isn't the best can actually make it difficult for you to invest because you won't get the best products that are on that market. And so because it's increasing the resistance that you would need in the future to get to the financial position you want to be in, then this would be classed as bad debt. And the third thing is limiting beliefs. If you're like me, then that means you love cars and when you're on the motorway, on the fast lane, there's always a really nice expensive car just gliding past you and you're probably thinking, yes, I wish that was me. And if you're not, well, don't judge me because that's me all the time. I want you to close your eyes right now and I want you to envision your favourite car, whatever car it is, and I want you to open your eyes now and think, can I get this? Now, if you said no, can't lie, I'm coming for you a little bit. Reason being, when you say no, you stop your mind from exploring ways in which you can achieve it. And our minds are really interesting. They kind of put energy towards the things that we want. And I can give you another practical example. Say you wanted to lose weight, you'll probably come up with an exercise routine, you'd look at a diet plan, you'd speak to people around you who have lost weight and are able to hold you accountable. You'd basically think about it and think of all of the different things that you can do to lose the weight that you want to lose. And the same thing with a car. Let's say you wanted to purchase a new car, you'd sit down and brainstorm the things that you'd need to do to make it possible. And that can mean saving a certain amount every month. It could be exploring a raise option at work. It could be taking your side hustle seriously. But the bottom line is, because you've accepted that actually I can get this, even if it doesn't seem possible now, you'll start to strategize in your mind on things that you can do practically to make that dream become a reality. So you're probably thinking, well, Yosa, what are practical things that I can do in my day to day to help elevate my mindset? And again, I'm going to focus on three things that you can do to do this. 
The first thing is investing in your knowledge. I cannot stress this enough. Last year, I set a goal to read 12 books and I actually read 17 books, which is crazy now that I say that. And I'll link in the description box all the 17 books that I read last year. But my top three books were this one, this one, and this one. And the reason why I think reading is so amazing is because sometimes these people who have done super amazing things, we don't necessarily have the privilege of bumping into at Tesco, but being able to read their book and understand why they've done certain things that they've done is so insightful. Another reason that I love to read is it challenges my thoughts around certain issues, particularly if I've only been exposed to one area of a topic. And other benefits of reading include improving your creativity because you're being exposed to all new ideas. It also helps to improve your cognitive function by helping to improve your memory and your focus. And I just think reading is super relaxing. It's a nice way to just Detach yourself from the world after a long day of work. Now, if you like some of my friends, the people I will not put on blast, that don't like to read, there are so many different ways that you can take in new content. There's YouTube videos, there's conferences, there's podcasts, there's newsletters, and I have a newsletter, so if you haven't subscribed, the link will be in the description box. So I would say find the way that works best for you. The second thing which you can do to level up and elevate your mind is to surround yourself with community. And this can be people who are on a similar journey to you, or it could be people who are already at the place that you're working to get to. And the reason why I love community so much is because you can learn from one another's mistakes, you can hold each other accountable, and most importantly, you can share knowledge and opportunities and anything that can help you all as a community get to where you want to get to. And I can't lie, it's hard initially trying to find a community, but there are practical steps that you can take in order to find a group of people that are like you and have a similar mindset to you. The first is posting your interests online. And this can be daunting to begin with, but hey, I started posting online. I'm like, guys, listen, I'm the doctor, me. <laughs> he likes all things health, business, and finance. And that's just my niche. The second thing that you can do is look on Reddit. There is loads of Reddit pages on different topics. So engaging with people in the community that way could be a great deal. The third is Facebook pages, looking for hashtags that people would commonly use associated with whatever community that you're trying to get yourself into. And the last is LinkedIn. Make sure you get a LinkedIn page and you're posting and you're sharing insights around the community or the things that it is that you're doing because that's also a really nice way to find people who are interested in the things that you're interested in. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this with someone who you think needs to elevate their mind. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care, Dr. Yosa.